focused and fearless. Here's everything you need to know this rush hour of July 25, Thursday. I'm Riza Diaz. We begin today's rush with the arrest of two alleged members of Abu Sayyaf in Quezon City, following reports that the group is planning to terrorize various parts of the country. The NBI says both of them know how to make bombs. Marlene Al-Qaeda has the report. <laughs> NBI Counterterrorism Division arrested Anwar Sabarul Mahoto, alias Ibno Ayub, in Quiapo, Manila, July 12. <laughs> After five days, NBI arrested in Kulyat, Quezon City, Adzal Manan, alias Julmain, who had set up a food stall business while hiding from authorities. They are said to be active members of the terrorist group Abu Sayyaf. They both have a standing arrest warrant for kidnapping members of Jehovah's Witnesses in 2002. NBI also received an intelligence information that they are planning to terrorize some parts of the country. ASG members uh, in Quiapo, well, they were planning to conduct bombing operations in uh, Metro Manila to terrorize and extort money from establishments. But, well, the plan was disrupted because of uh, his arrest. NBI said Julmain and Anwar were both trained to fabricate improvised explosive device. NBI adds Julmain is a trusted man of the late ASG leader Isnilon Hapilon and underwent training under ASG leader Qaddafi Janjalani in Lanao del Sur, while alias Ibno Ayub or Ayub is said to be a relative of a former ASG leader. The NBI has yet to verify if the two are connected to foreign terrorist organizations. Asked if the allegations against them were true. Huh? No comment. For News 5, Marlene Alcaide, we are One News. Meanwhile, authorities have confirmed that an Indonesian couple caused the Holob suicide bombing that killed 23 people in January. Marian Enriquez with the report. In 2016, Ruli Rian Zeke and Ulfa Handayani Saleh tried to enter Syria to join ISIS. Failing to do that, the Indonesian couple instead traveled to the southern Philippines. And here is where their road ended. The couple was tagged by the Indonesian National Police as responsible for the Holo suicide bombing that killed 23 people in January this year. The Indonesian couple were said to be part of Jemaya and Shorut Daula an Islamic extremist group banned in Indonesia and allied with ISIS. Philippine security officials say the report from Jakarta confirms their own findings. We see this as a confirmation doon sa aming nakita, no? base sa intelligence na meron kami at saka sa resulta ng investigasyon na nagkaroon tayo pagkatapos nga noong hulo uh, cathedral bombing. Ano? Kasi kung natatanda ninyo, we told the public at that time that uh, we suspect na mga Indonesians itong uh, mag-asawa no, na nagpasabog nga ng bomba dito sa Mount Carmel Cathedral. The Indonesian National Police said the couple tried to enter Syria through Turkey but were captured in 2017 and deported back to Indonesia. There, they underwent rehabilitation before being released by Indonesian authorities. Apparently, the rehab did not take hold and the couple found their way to Holo where the man even learned the Taosog dialect. We have said that before already, na these are uh, suspected Indonesian couple. No? And uh, based on the witnesses na, na dinimanda natin, pinailan ng kaso, no? these were identified as uh, Indonesian uh, Indonesians. Yung uh, sinasabi nga natin dito is yung lalaki, eh, medyo matagal na sa Pilipinas, yung babae naman, kararating from uh, Sambuanga. So and, uh, we also said, I think, uh, sinabi na rin natin that yung lalaki can already speak the local dialect, pero yung babae ay hindi pa. Arevalo meanwhile stressed the importance of cooperation among countries in the region. Ang mahalagang makita natin dito ano, ay yung pangangailangan. Mas higit na nakikita nating pangangailangan na dapat mayroong magandang coordination, mas malalim na koordinasyon sa pagitan ng mga bansa sa rehiyon, particularly ang uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines on all matters, no? not only relating to the military but also matters that are of relevance to the police sapagkat uh, ito ang magpapatibay sa ating uh, security posture. For News 5, Marian Enriquez, we are One News.
President Duterte made it clear in his midterm sauna that he wants a death penalty reinstated for crimes related to plunder and illegal drugs. Palace spokesman Salpanelo, however, took it a notch higher with some gory specifics. Some senators also have harsh suggestions of their own, and Greg Gregorio has the story. It's already one of the most controversial and divisive of the president's proposals. But presidential spokesman Salvador Panelo may have taken the issue to a different level when he broached the idea of death penalty by hanging. Iloilo Congresswoman Janet Garin said Panelo's remark would not help the swift passage of the bill at all. Ako Bicol Congressman Alfredo Garbin reminded Panelo that the use of rope for death penalty is a form of torture that is prohibited by law. Despite the controversy, other lawmakers were quick to take up the president's call. Senator Christopher Bongo appealed to fellow legislators to impose the death penalty for drug trafficking and plunder. Exasperated na po ang Pangulo, pagod na pagod na po ang Pangulo. Tulungan niyo naman kami paano ito sugpuin. Ano naman ang ikatakot natin po? Hindi naman kayo nagnanakaw. So, anong ikatakot niyo? Senator Manny Pacquiao also expressed support for Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa's bill seeking death penalty via firing squad. Kung droga siguro, firing squad para makita ng mga tao na huwag dolaran. Kasi, pag-plunder. Depende na rin, pwede rin i-parent squad, pwede rin lethal injection. Several bills imposing the death penalty have already been filed with the lower chamber. House Bill No. 368 imposes the death penalty on foreign nationals proven to be guilty for drug trafficking. Even the evangelist and Sebak Partalist Representative Eddie Villanueva is in favor of the death penalty. But Villanueva also highlighted the need for its proper implementation. Pero sa hindi tutol, kasi biblical nga yun eh. Pero kailangan may protection ang may hirap na akusado. Kasi tingnan mo mga kulungan ngayon eh. Wala kang makikita ng mga milyonaryo, multimillionaire and billionaire, no? Kaya kailangan yung justice system natin ma-improve talaga eh. Kaya kailangan merong no-nonsense safety nets. Surigao del Norte Representative Robert Ace Barbers also filed a separate bill for the death penalty. Barbers said he is confident that the death penalty will pass the 18th Congress considering the support from the Senate and the lower house. For News 5, Greg Gregorio, we are One News. Here are the biggest stories from the dailies. A Filipina may face death sentence in Malaysia after she was arrested for allegedly trafficking nearly 6 kilos of shabu worth 3.4 million pesos. Philippine Star reports that a Saba police arrested the 32-year-old Pinay during a raid in the town of Mangatal in Kota Kinabalu. Police says the confiscated drugs reportedly belonged to another person when they were trafficking. Under Malaysian laws, those caught with 200 grams or more of cannabis or 15 grams or more of heroin or morphine are presumed to be trafficking, an offense that carries mandatory death sentence. Meanwhile, you may want to check how your next Jollibee coffee tastes like. That's after the local fast food giant acquired California-based coffee bean and tea leaf for $350 million, Jollibee's largest purchase to date. Jollibee's um, coffee business will take up will now take up 14% of its worldwide system sales with its acquisition of CBTL and previously Highlands Coffee. Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf reported 1,000 outlets worldwide in 2018, nearly half of which are in the United States and Korea, while there are 139 branches in the Philippines. And this from Filipino Star Ngayon. WBA welterweight champion Manny Pacquiao is challenging Floyd Mayweather Jr. to a rematch. This comes after Mayweather taunted him on Instagram saying Pacquiao's entire legacy and career was built of his association with Mayweather. The 8th Division World Champion is confident that he can defeat the American boxer in a fight despite losing to him in 2015. Kung gusto niyang papatulan, kung gusto niyang lumaban, di, ma, 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 kung gusto niyang huminto ang pagtatanong ng mga fans, uh, lumaban siya. Kasi yun, yun ang gusto ng mga fans eh. 
House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano apologized to athletes on Wednesday over several issues that tainted the 2019 SEA Games preparations. That's despite getting out of Facebook days before becoming Speaker. Greg Gregorio with the story. In a crowd of sports executives, the new Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano brought up politics. Today, let me apologize kung na politicize uh, ang Southeast Asian Games for one reason, that I'm a politician. But let's also be truthful to each other. There's so much politics in sports. Cayetano says there's no truth to rumors that they entered into a purchase deal for overpriced uniforms. Ba't ko naman sisirain ang pangalan ko for 250 pieces of uniform? At the center of the controversy is FISGOC or the Philippine Southeast Asian Games Organizing Committee, a private corporation that is running this November's Games for Government. The venture involves contracts and deals that run to millions. Cayetano also happens to be part of FISGOC. If it's true that there is corruption, let's put people behind bars. But you know, if it's politicizing the event, it affects all of us. The world is looking at us. In January this year, Malacanang issued Memorandum Circular No. 56 directing government agencies to coordinate with FISGOC. Some critics say Executive Secretary Salvador Medjaldea had no authority to sign the memo on behalf of the President. But Medjaldea says the President has his back. Full support to ang Presidente <laughs> sa Philippine Sport. Hindi kagaya ng minumong kahi ng iba. Nawala daw po kaming otoridad mag-issue ng kung ano-anong order. The controversy is almost endangered the hosting of the Philippines of the Sea Games until the president made it clear the games must happen this November. For News 5, Greg Gregorio, we are One News. Here are the stories to watch out for later today. President Duterte is heading up north for the inauguration of the Candon City Bypass Road in Ilocos Sur. Love going to Green Hills? Well, listen up. San Juan City's executive order on no parking zones in some areas around Green Hills takes effect today. And the proposal is finally happening. The MMDA is set to launch the Summer Metro Manila Film Festival. And that's how the day is shaping up to be. Join us again next time for another round of Rush. I'm Riza Diaz. We are One News.